Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 31. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our speed calibration and our gear ratio calculation. So we're going to find if we reference anything with vehicle speed, if we're having our wheel speed sensors wired into our Link G4X or a vehicle speed sensor. We need to make sure they're calibrated properly and set up and configured properly so they're going to read. So I'm going to go and walk you through how to set up your vehicle speed sensors and going through the different sources between the driven and undriven wheels, and then taking a look at how to calibrate our gear ratio calculation if we're going in and referencing things based on gear position. So if we want to do boost by gear or do a fuel or ignition correction based on gear or do any kind of gear cuts, we have to know what our gear position is going to be and we have to rely on our speed sensor being calibrated properly. So we're going to go through how to go and set up speed and gear in this video. It's going to be very clear how to do it and you'll be able to implement that in your calibration strategy. Without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with setting up our vehicle speed calibration as well as our gear calculations within our PC Link software. If we need to register and look at our vehicle speed for something like a fan turning on or off, or if we want to do some kind of a speed based correction, uh, speed based boost control, if we want to work with traction control, we need to make sure that our speed sensors are calibrated right. It's actually a really simple process as we're going to find out. And then we're going to take a look at setting up our gear calculations. If we want to determine things based on gear, if we want to do boost by gear, we want to do any kind of a gear shift cut, or if we want to do something for a gear correction, we talked about that in our 4 and 5D tables in that example, we were working with a fuel and ignition correction based on gear, we have to have our gear registered properly so that when we're shifting through the gears, it's going to know what gear we're in. It's going to be a function of the speed and engine RPM. So it's going to be doing a calculation and a correlation between those two. So we need to make sure our speed is calibrated first. So we're going to be taking a look at how to do that first, then moving into looking at our gear determination and calculation a little bit later in the video. First thing we're going to do is jump from our basics page and move across here at our top into our page label VSS slash gear. This is going to be short for vehicle speed sensor slash gear. Now, at the very top of the screen here, this is where we set up a lot of the configuration details for our vehicle speed sensor sources in order to make sure this is work, working right and it's calibrated right. Um, so let's go here into our setup. Let's start to talk about this first. Then we'll talk about how we can calibrate our vehicle speed sensors or our transmission speed source. So we're going to have different kinds of sources that we can have for determining our vehicle speed. So going up here to the top under setup, we're going to find we have our driving wheel speed source and our driven wheel speed source. So the driving wheel is going to be your acceleration wheel. If you're on, um, if we're taking a look at a front wheel drive car, that would be your front wheels. If we're a real drive car, that would be your rear wheels. So the driving wheel is going to be the wheel that's powered, um, that's going through and actually making the car accelerate. Your driven wheel is going to be also known as your ground speed. So normally this is called undriven wheel speed, but they're calling driving wheel the driven wheel and then the driven wheel the ground speed wheel or the wheel that's not powered from our source. So if we're front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, we're going to have a driving or a driven. If we're going to be an all-wheel drive car, we have to handle this a little bit different. But let's go here and just take a look, um, going into our driving wheel speed source, we're going to go and select what that's going to be. Now we have a bunch of options here. We can find we have our wheel speeds, so if we're wiring in individual wheel speeds into our application, we can select one of these as our speed source. So we're going to have our right front, and then we're going to have our left front, so RF, LF, and then we'll have our rears, left rear, right rear. So that's going to be our wheel speeds. So we can pick one wheel speed to be our driving wheel or the acceleration wheel source. If it's a front wheel drive car, I would be choosing either my right front or my left front. Or we can go here and choose average front speed. So if we're wiring in individual speed sensors, if we have all four wheel speed sensors set up here, we'd have our right front and our left front added together and averaging constantly as our wheel speed source. That's a solid option as well. Um, we can also have here some other options here. Uh, the minimum front speed or maximum front speed for the source. So if we're looking here and we don't want to average the two together and we want to take a look at what the individual speeds are doing, it can take then what the maximum front speed as the, the driven speed source or the minimum, which is going to be lower of the two as an option. Um, and then we also have some other options here. GP speed one, this is going to be if you have a transmission speed source. So you're wiring in your transmission speed into your link. You're not using a wheel speed sensor. You would choose this option here. Now, if you have an all-wheel drive car and you have all four wheel speeds coming in, you would use average four wheels. 
Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.